can get no better. We got WWE zone Greg Hamilton in the building as well as Cincinnati zone. Woohoo! So, for everybody that don't know, my homie Greg Hamilton is from here in Cincinnati. He's a, uh, like I said, he's a WWE announcer, so he's gonna tell us the insight about Vince McMahon, Triple H, all that inside stuff, all right? We gonna, we gonna get into it. You ready? You ready for him? Yeah. All right, welcome to the stage, Greg Hamilton. Let's get into it. Woohoo! And first of all, listen, I want to say, uh, give a big shout out to AR-15 and Tribe. Let, let's hear it one more time for those guys, man. Like, <laughs> Cincinnati has got some some incredible artists coming through. Yeah, some crazy talent here, right? Exactly. I just, I, I talk for a living. That's all I do. They, they're actual <laughs> artists, so hopefully I don't bore everybody. Oh, no, no way, no way. I think we all grew up on WWE, WWF, right? Yeah. Right, we all, we all know about wrestling. Man. I feel a little better now then. Thank you. That makes <laughs> you feel a little better. <laughs> It's not the bathroom break. That's what I expected, but that's cool. <laughs> well, what's up, man? Uh, back in the city, traveling, what, five days a week all over the world? Yeah, so with WWE, um, if you watch, I don't expect everybody does, but if you do, we're 52 weeks a year. We don't have an off-season. I do SmackDown Live every Tuesday night in USA, and I got called up to do the main roster stuff in July of 2016. Since then, I haven't missed a week of television. So 52 weeks a year, we're on the wow. road. The best week that I have, like, the most time I have home is when I fly home on a Wednesday. After SmackDown, I don't have to fly out again until Monday for SmackDown. But, like, this whole this whole past few months have been crazy. So you've been in, what, you did a Euro European tour? You're out in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, we did, like... we did a pay-per-view in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah Stadium. We did, um, uh, yeah, the European tour. In the month of May, we did the Europe tour. I was home a total of four days in the month of May. Wow. Yo, how do you even get the stamina, the energy to, to travel so often and not, not rest, though? Uh, here's, the, here's the truth. It does get tiring, but at the same time, I could be digging ditches in 120-degree heat in Louisiana, and I'm not. I get to do what I love to do every day. So as soon as I start to be like, oh, I'm so tired, I just want to go home, I'm like, wait a minute. You're getting paid to talk on a microphone around the world. Shut up and be grateful. So, it's a good way to look at it. It's an internal monologue that you have to remind yourself. Right, right. So, I mean, I think you have the best job. Just coming from a wrestling fan, it's, it's amazing. You don't have to take any bumps. You're just out there in the thick of it all. I, I steal money is what I do. <laughs> they haven't figured it out yet, but they, yeah. How, how, what was your career path to get to this point? Man, I'll give you like the Reader's Digest version because it's, yeah, it's kind of weird. I've been, first of all, I'm going to preface all of this by saying I've been incredibly lucky. So when you hear the things I tell you, know that I'm telling you first that I was very lucky. So you're not like, man, this month is just lucky. <laughs> Shut your mouth. So truth is, um, I'm from the area originally, born and raised. And then um, actually my first foray into any sort of hosting or anything was with KISS FM here in Cincinnati. Oh, wow. Radio, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was an intern at KISS FM doing promotions, but I lied to them and told them I was in college when I had dropped out because <laughs> I wanted to get into it so badly. So I was like, yeah, yeah, go to Miami Hamilton. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and then eventually got a job offer to work for the station. So I did that. Um, and then I was just young and ambitious, and I was uh, naive enough to believe all my dreams could come true, which is a good thing at that point because they can. But when you're young and you're hungry, you're like, yeah, I can do that. Of course I can. So I started applying to cruise ships, and I got a job overnight working on a cruise ship out of Miami just doing hosting and activities. I'd never seen a cruise ship before, but it wow. sounded cool to a 21-year-old kid right. in Cincinnati. So I did that, um, worked my way up to cruise director. From there, randomly met a producer from CBS from Texas, and he said, hey, man, I like your stuff. I like your hosting. Have you ever done television? I said, no. He said, well, if you ever want to guest host our morning show on CBS in San Antonio, come through. So my next vacation, being young and hungry, I was like, hey, Luis, I'll come through. So I did. I guest hosted the morning show. A month later, the regular male personality decided he wasn't going to renew his contract, and he left. And wow. Luis called me and said, hey, we liked you. Do you want to come audition for this the male host of the morning show? And I legit, and, and then I did, and I got it. I overnight went from cruise director to CBS morning show. Wow. Luckiest MF from the planet. Wow. <laughs> then signed with an agent in Los Angeles, 
moved to LA, started some hosting there, and then, yeah, the rest is history. Wow. Lucky, lucky, wow. lucky, lucky. Wow. That's it. Wow, that's Blessed. what's up. Blessed, grateful. And this man is from where we're from, and he made it out of here, and he's living his dreams. I think that's incredibly well, look, inspirational. I made it out, but I made it back. You know, I live here now, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you were in Orlando before where, you know, most of WWE's, like, you know, developmental is. Um, what made you come back to Cincinnati other than being where it's where you're from? So, yeah, for, for those of you that don't know, the um, at WWE, we have the Performance Center in Orlando, which is kind of like our training facility. Think of it like as um, a combine for an NFL team or whatever. That's where we train and develop new stars that are coming up. Same with the hosting team. So I, I help train and develop the host team there. And then because we are on the road every week, we're in a different city. So my boss was like, listen, man, you've earned it. You can live wherever you want. I don't care. So anywhere in the lower 48 states, I can live. And... That sounds really cool, and it is, but it's also very overwhelming when you can do that. Because it's like, man, you're... And I thought about it, and I, I thought of different places, and, and this is the God's honest truth. So we do shows at U.S. Bank Arena, as you know. We do shows here in town. Right, right. And every time we would come back to Cincinnati, when that plane landed, the way I felt internally felt so fucking good. That I, I was like, I'm moving back to Cincinnati. No place like home, man. No place like yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. This is where I want to be. I mean, I, I could live anywhere, but I chose to. I live like a mile from here, two miles. That's amazing. So, so when when this um, SmackDown is on Thursdays, right? It's on Tuesday. Thursday. Tues they Tuesdays. They moved it to Tuesdays. They about to Tuesday. move it again. They both, they both begin with a T. It's fine. It's okay. Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> Tuesdays then, now. Of course, yeah. Monday Night Raw is still what it is. Yeah, my, yeah, Monday Night Raw is on Mondays. So each week you traveling out. So what is like a Sunday you traveling out or a Monday night? No, so we, we also do live event shows on the weekends that are non-televised. So we'll do, for SmackDown, we'll do shows in different cities on Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, TV on Tuesday night, fly home Wednesday. So, like, a lot of times I'll fly out on Friday to do shows on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, then TV on Tuesday, fly home Wednesday. In the past few months, that's all it's been. But sometimes, like I said, about a weekend or two a month, I get to fly home on Wednesday, fly out on, on the Monday. So I get like one weekend, okay. two weekends that I'm actually home. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, on SmackDown, on Tuesdays, uh, you've been in a pretty big storyline with, with Vince McMahon's son, Shane McMahon. And he's got you out here. He's, uh, you know, roughing you up a little bit, making sure you say his name right, uh, the whole best in the world thing. Uh, what's it like working with Shane and being a part of that storyline? Shane McMahon is awesome. First of all, that storyline has been the best thing for my career that's ever happened. Because, you know, announcers don't get a lot of love. It's, it's about the superstars, and I get that. It's about Roman Reigns. It's about Randy Orton. It's about those guys. I totally get that. So then was, this whole thing started with me announcing Shane McMahon is the best in the world. It, like, gave me a little shine, which I'm not used to, because that's not normally the way it works. Right, right. So it's been awesome, and Shane is fantastic. Like, to be honest, the, after the first... Did you, there was an episode where Shane McMahon is li literally dragging me down the aisle by the tie. I was worried for you, bro. Dragging me, making me announce his name over and over again is the best you, in the you world. You should have choked him up, man. Wow. That's a boss's son, man. That's, yeah, that's my boss, man. <laughs> but this is the truth. Um, he is. He's Vince McMahon's son. As I was, uh, I got back to my hotel that night, I had a voicemail from Shane McMahon thanking me, saying, dude, awesome job, man. I'm like... Shane McMahon just called me and left me a voicemail. What? <laughs> Insane. So it's pretty man. awesome. He's a good, he's a really good guy. Insane, man. And and business is booming. WWE just picked up a new TV deal where SmackDown is gonna move to Friday nights, primetime on Fox, which is gonna bring way more eyes on the product. And we're gonna we're gonna put Cincinnati on Fox on uh, on Friday nights. That's right. So hell yeah. Right now, SmackDown, the, sh the show that I do is on USA on Tuesday nights, but starting October 4th, we're going to be primetime on Fox Network TV, Friday nights live. It's going to be SmackDown live. I, I can't wait. That's insane, man. You got a, a, a lucky job, man. You did you Very did lucky. It, man. I told you that. I tried, I tried you to did tell it, you. Man. So look, I'm going to put you on the spot with this one. Give me your top three favorite wrestlers of all time. Oh, well, Ric Flair's the GOAT. Let's, let's not even pretend that we need to have, a like, a think over number one. <laughs> Flair's the GOAT, no doubt about it. I agree. I agree. Um, man, that's a tough one. Other, 
two or three. I mean, oh, well, you got Stone gotta, Cold. That was my boy. Stone Cold you was gotta, my boy. Okay, yeah. You got to give it up for Stone Cold. It, here's, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate some of the current people, current stars as well, but like you got to look at Stone Cold. You got to look at The Rock. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Watch him while he's still here. Randy Orton, man. Woo! He's a he fit. brings it every RKO single time. I know the ladies love the RKO, for sure. For sure. We get some interesting signs from women in the <laughs> audience about wanting to be RKO'd. <laughs> but Whatever you're into, I guess. <laughs> no, so we're like, you have to miss, miss, you got to put that sign down. You can't, we, you, we can't put that on TV. <laughs> so look, uh, when you were younger, did you, did you used to watch wrestling growing up? I did. When I was just like everybody else, when you're a kid, you grew up, you watch WWF, WWE. Uh, and when I was a kid in 1993, I went to King of the Ring wow. in Dayton, Ohio. But then, like, you know, you, you, you get older and sometimes you forget about it. Life gets in the way. So I hadn't watched for years. Yeah. The truth is, the older I got, the less I cared about trying to be the next Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I didn't care about that anymore. All I wanted to do was travel the world and eat good food and be happy. That's all I care about. Yo, now that you say Ryan Seacrest, I can't not, not see Ryan Seacrest when I look at you, man. I said I don't, I, I decided I didn't want to be Ryan Seacrest. I know, Seacrest. But you should never said it. Now I envision. Well, I didn't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> well, hell, you worked for, uh, you did some stuff with American Idol, didn't you? Yeah, I did in Orlando. Funny enough, yeah, I did. A, uh, <laughs> I was a host for a live stage version of American Idol. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, you know, wrestling right now on all fronts, different companies is, um, it's the biggest it's ever been, in my opinion, at least. What's it feel like being, in my eyes, the best announcer in the wrestling business at a time like this? Did I give you that $100 bill to say that yet? <laughs> I'm going to write you a check. I'm not going to... You listen, I, I appreciate the compliment. I, um, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm trying to do my best. I, I mean, I don't know. It's, I'm, having, I'm having a great time. I don't, you know, I don't know where history will see me as far as ring announcers go. Down the road, we'll find out. We'll see what history says. I think as long as I'm having a good time and I put the superstars first, like my announcements are about them. Right. So I want to make them feel special, give each person their own unique announcement so that everything is just cookie cutter. Because Shinsuke Nakamura is a different type of star than AJ Styles, right. than Aleister Black, than Randy Orton. So each of those stars deserve their own sound when they come to the ring. And that's, that's all I try to do. Um, and to be honest, I've never ring announced anything in my life before this job, which I think is, has helped me because I'm not trying to sound like anybody else because I don't know what that sounds like. Right, right, right. It's, it's just about the stars. Man. It's about putting the stars over. Uh, who are some of the guys you travel with or, or hang out with on the road? Uh, definitely Shinsuke. Shinsuke Nakamura. That's my guy. Like, <laughs> he's, he's big into food and travel like me. So, you know, we'll, on the international tours, even if we land at 4 a.m., we'll be up at 7 a.m. to go see the city before we have to go to the arena at, like, 4 p.m. But he's into food and culture and, and learning and being immersed in other cultures and eating different food just like me. So Shinsuke, for sure, hands down, that, that's my guy. That's sweet. One thing I want to ask you, your, your voice is pretty much, that's your everything. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you get sick, you know, a few times out the year, but what, is, what are some remedies that you can do to kind of, that you help that when you're on the road, you know, sore throat and all that stuff? I'll, I'll be honest with you, more than remedies, it's technique. So speak from here, not here. Like, this is the engine that drives it. This is just where you add a little fine-tuning. So if you project from here, even if you have a sore throat or you're losing your voice, you can't tell. So the, your chest, your diaphragm, that's your engine for your voice versus talking with your throat. And that's what I try to teach new announcers, new hosts. Otherwise, I mean, we do these, these tours in Europe for three weeks. If you're talking from your throat, you're going to blow your voice out in, in oh, you know, less than a week. So just learning how to project from here so that this, all you're doing with this is inflection. The engine of your voice is right here. And the air comes from here. Engine here, this is just fine tuning. You got it down, man. Oh, man, you cold. You got it down. I don't do anything else, so this has to work. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to get up and perform and like these guys, so this is all I have, so I have to take care of it. So, so after today, the next time you're going to be on is what? You said Friday? Tomorrow? Well, I'll leave Saturday. We have, we have, a, Saturday, we have the Extreme Rules pay-per-view on Sunday. Okay. Like, oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Hey, my, we, fa my family's here. <laughs> <laughs> we having a watch party at my house, so holla at me. Oh, really? Yeah. 
I watch it every week. Ask me. Every week? I'm a I'm an avid watcher, man. He is, he is. And we got, we, uh, there's a guy out there that brought the Intercontinental title with him. That Yo, made me happy. Yeah, Brother out there has the that. IC title. Top Rope Tyler. Oh, he win it. Is that, what, it. is that his name? Top yeah. Rope Tyler? Yep. <laughs> Give you a two sweet, Shout brother. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Um, so, besides WWE, you got anything else coming up in the near future? Uh, not right now. I, I will say this. You know, part of the reason I moved back to Cincinnati is because I want to do things in the city. I want to be a part of the city. I do a lot with City Beat Magazine. I'll, I'll do videos for them just volunteer-wise. Actually, Tribe and I were talking about something for um, one of their potluck for the people. And I've got some ideas. And I actually, while the show was going on, I was texting a buddy of mine. Uh, about, I don't want to give it away what's going to happen, but we've got uh -oh. for potluck for the people at the uh -oh. end of August. Uh -oh. We've already been talking about uh -oh. it. So, you know, I... I moved back to Cincinnati for a reason, and I want to be a part of the city, and I want to use any influence I have to do good things in the city. And that's why when you invited me here, I, I was like, absolutely, I'm there, I'll be there. And so things like Potluck for the People and things that City Beat Magazine are doing, and uh, I hosted Yasiel Puig's charity event uh, yeah, for his that. Wild Horse Children's okay. Foundation to help okay. raise money for underprivileged youth in the city of Cincinnati. So I want to take what the, I want to take the platform that WWE gives me and do something in Cincinnati with it, man. So that's why I'm back. That's why I'm here. So I don't know what's next. I know the thing with Tribe is coming up. We're going to talk more about that. But basically, anything in the city that I can do to, to help create a positive image and positivity, that, that's why I'm here. Okay, okay. So, so it seems like people just got to follow you on social media so they can stay in tune about what's going on. Yeah, just uh, Greg Hamilton, WWE, Twitter, Instagram. Also, if you like food, my like 70% of my Instagram is food. So if you, you like foodie, food. Huh? You be eating some crazy stuff, man. Like... I saw yeah. something the other like squid wrapped in bacon. No, that was no, that was bacon wrapped in mushrooms that I made. Okay. So, Greg, all that pork is good for your voice, man. No, I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's like I did a blowfish dinner, which is a poisonous fish in, in Tokyo. Can't you die from? from you can. The, the chef has to be trained for seven years before he can prepare it at a restaurant. And count me out, man. But no, it's great, dude. Nakamura, <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura took me at a blast. So say if you like food, that's all over my IG. Dope, man. So Greg Hamilton, WWE, all Twitter, Instagram, all that. That's it, man. Sounds Dope. good. Sounds Thank you, guys. Good. Thanks for having me, we, we appreciate you coming through and taking time out of your busy schedule. It means a lot to us, man. Happy to, man. For sure. Happy to be back home in Cincinnati, baby! Cincinnati is on. Y'all make some noise for Greg Hamilton. Cincinnati against the world. There you go. There we yeah. go. Yeah.